Hello, Joel Tavern here from Golf Monthly on the stunning driving range at Adair Manor in Ireland with a bit of a comparison test for you today with TaylorMade's ball range for 2018. I've got three of them here. We've got the TaylorMade TP5, the Project A and the Project S. Now, I'm not going to talk about the technology of these balls. If you want to know more about that, go on the Golf Monthly website for all that information. But in this video, we're going to just be comparing the performance of the three golf balls in all different areas of the game to see where the difference is and similarities in performance lie and to help you uh, pick potentially which ball is best for your game. As we know, TaylorMade making big strides in the golf ball market, especially that TP5 in that premium category. Uh, some impressive tour results and some market share as well gain in the TP5 ball. It's a really good offering. Obviously, they come in at three different price points. We've got the TP5 at £49.99 per dozen. That's their most premium offering. Then we move down into the Project A, which we saw originally launched a few years ago. It's kind of in that mid price point of £39.99. As we know, it has a urethane cover. And then the new offering for 2018 is this Project S. S standing for soft feel, comes in at £24.99, so it is the lower price point option. So we're going to see what kind of performance they give us. I've been having a test with them here today on the various long game and short game practice facilities. I also collected some dry ball launch monitor data as well with the GC2 launch monitor using all three of these golf balls. I hit a 50 yard pitch shot, a 7 iron and a driver. So to assess the differences in performance across different clubs in the bag. So let's have a look at the data and give you my summary of the findings of the testing to guide you into the performance they offer and which one might be best for your game and your budget. So I've got my various bits of technology here guiding me through the results. There were some significant findings, I think, from the data that I collected. First of all, starting with the TP5, you can see from the data that it did give me the highest spinning, lowest launching numbers on the 50 yard pitch shot. So what does that mean? It means that the cover is really soft. It's really getting into the grooves of the wedge. The launch is nice and low, but it's spinning a lot when it lands. TP5 also gave me the fastest driver ball speed and the longest carry. So I hit the TP5 further off the tee, only by a few yards, but actually the ball speed was a couple of miles an hour quicker than the other two balls uh, I tested. So that's really interesting to note. The iron performance was pretty you know, steady across the board. Nothing really of note. The spin was about middle, the launch was about middle, and the distance was actually the shortest of the three. But you know, golfers who play the TP5 don't necessarily want to hit the ball Further, they just want consistency. You can see the distances there were incredibly consistent, ranging from 159 to 161. So moving on to the Project A golf ball, which is the middle of the three, you can see it gave me good driver ball speed of 155 miles an hour, an average carry of 269, which is only a few yards short of the TP5. So not really losing out significantly on driver performance, you can see the spin and launch were pretty similar. For an iron shot, the performance was all round was very good, got a little bit more distance. You can see you got five more yards of distance compared to the TP5, similar amount of spin and launch and a touch more ball speed. With that shorter shot, that 50 yard pitch shot, the uh, performance was also quite similar, launching a little bit higher and slightly lower spinning. So I didn't quite get that short game performance of the TP5, but it was very similar and the control and feel as well around the greens was superb. We'll come on to that in a second. Moving on to the Project S, which is the lowest price point of those three golf balls. As you might expect around the greens, it was the, gave me the lowest spinning because it's not a urethane cover. So it did launch a touch high and didn't give me as much spin. But we're only talking a couple of hundred RPM around the greens. Iron performance definitely gave me the longest distance. You can see ball speed was up, spin was down at 4,800 and the carry and ball flight actually was higher that peaking at 39 yards, average carry of 169 yards. So while it might not spin as much into greens, you're getting a higher ball flight and more distance if you want that. Moving on to the driver now, for me, I didn't get as much ball speed with this ball compared to the others. You can see ball speed 152 miles an hour, so it's five mile an hour shorter than the TP5. But if you've got a slower swing speed, you might see a smaller gap in, in ball speed uh, between the two because it is a low compression golf ball. It's designed arguably more for slower swingers. So if you want more distance from a low compression golf ball, this one might give you that characteristic, but it didn't for me, I didn't get as much driver ball speed. My swing speed is around about 106, 107 miles an hour, which didn't quite work for me. But that said, the iron performance was impressive and you weren't losing out significantly on the short game performance either. 
Right, so how would I categorise the performance of these three golf balls and who are they really aimed at? Obviously budget plays a little bit of a part on that, you're paying a premium for the TP5, but what are you getting for your money? Well, you're getting an excellent all-round package in that this ball, it feels soft, it spins around the green, you notice that lower ball flight, which is for me, is easier to control. When you know the ball is going to check up, it allows you to be more confident and uh, committed through your chip and pitch shots. Having tested it today around the short game area, I was really impressed with the durability of the TP5 as well. So it also gave me the best performance off the tee. Whether that's because I've got a mid to fast swing speed, you'll need to have tr a try of different balls and see if that's going to deliver that for you. But for me, as a mid to fast swinger, I got the most distance off the tee with this golf ball. Didn't get the distance I was expecting with the iron shots, but it was an excellent all-round performer and very consistent with the iron shot. Gave me quite a high ball flight, actually, and uh, helped me stop the ball on the greens. Now, moving on to the Project A. Now, this is £10 cheaper, so what are you sacrificing for that £10? Well, for me, it was a little bit of distance off the tee. A slight reduction in short game performance, but it was difficult actually to tell the difference between the two around the greens. Obviously the launch monitor told me that the ball wasn't spinning quite as much on those 50 yard pitch shots, but on shorter shots around the green, because it's got a urethane cover, you're not really activating the layers underneath. I don't think you're going to notice really anything between the Project A and the TP5 in terms of short game performance on those really short shots. Off the putter, they both feel very similar. I think with the Project A, you are getting a little bit more distance with those iron shots as well. So this is a really fantastic offering actually for the price point. You're only sacrificing marginal performance. Those, don't get me wrong, the TP5 is TaylorMade's best performing golf ball, but the Project A is only very slightly behind it. The Project S, there's no question. This is an excellent golf ball actually. It comes in a few different colors so if you want to personalize your game. This definitely feels the softest, no question, for all clubs. For me, it didn't quite give me the control I was looking for. You have to allow for a little bit of extra run on those pitch and chip shots. Didn't quite get the performance off the tee as well, but this is a low compression golf ball. If you've got a slower swing speed, you might actually get more distance with this golf ball compared to other balls in the range that might cost a little bit more. And if you want a little bit more distance with your iron shots, the Project S is definitely going to deliver that as well. If you favour a soft feeling golf ball, this is definitely the one to go. Feels really soft around the greens. You might worry about that higher ball flight into the wind, but because the spin is slightly lower, you should actually still maintain a pretty strong ball flight with that TaylorMade Project S golf ball. So three excellent offerings from TaylorMade. Hopefully that's given you insight into which one might be best for your game. As always, like the video if you, if you like this comparison test we've done here today. Be sure to comment which ball would you pick. And I want to know from you, what is the biggest factor when choosing a golf ball? Is it price, is it short game performance, long game performance, or is it a soft feel? What do you look for in a golf ball as the number one factor? Really want to hear from you. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you again soon.